Today's conversation is an incredible deep dive into both the gut microbiome and the vaginal microbiome, an area that really needs to be discussed more. We're going to hit on both of those with the founder of Seed. Um, her name is Eric Katz. You might already be familiar with Seed from their flagship product, DSO-1. It's garnered mass attention from celebrities like Gwyneth Paltrow, Carly Kloss, and Cameron Diaz, and clinched the title of the number one selling probiotic for gut health and beyond. Um, and while gut health and the gut microbiome have been trending topics in recent years, an extraordinary yet less wide known ecosystem is coming to the forefront, which is the vaginal microbiome. So we are getting all into that. We're getting into the science behind Seeds products. I was very impressed with the research behind them, their commitment to excellence. Um, and even though I already work with Microbiome Labs for probiotics, I was like, wow, these guys are doing amazing things. So I wanted to bring them to your attention. Um, please give this whole episode a listen because it is just um, information packed and very enjoyable to listen to from start to finish. We'll start with the vaginal microbiome and then we'll go on into the gut microbiome. And um, if you are interested in trying seed, make sure you listen for the protocol she mentions. And I'm sure they give you that with the product. But if you're inter interested in seed or the vaginal probiotic uh, suppository supplement that they have, they are offering a 25% off discount for you guys with code Coach Tara, or you can just uh, click the link in the show notes and that will automatically apply the discount to either um, the VSO1 or the DESO1, their uh, gut microbiome probiotics. So let's go ahead and get all into this, talking about vaginal microbiome, gut microbiome with Era Katz. Okay, so Era, uh, probably some of my listeners have probably heard of Seed or maybe are using Seed. So I'm excited to speak with you today and jump into some of the science behind it. I've been impressed with your lineup of three very simple products, your mm -hmm. gut microbiome product and your vaginal microbiome product, and then one for kids for the gut. And I want to start with the vaginal microbiome because this is something that is not, I mean, let, let's be honest, the vagina is not talked about enough in general. It's like this big, like bad secret. Like it's so weird, you know, and, um, considering, <laughs> we all, can, can, considering we all wouldn't be here without one. It's exactly. incredible, incredibly strange today. Yes, exactly. You know, there's a, there's a book, you've probably read it. Um, it was a New York times bestseller. It's called pussy a reclamation. It's a book that I've had many of my female clients read who have struggled with their sexuality because there has been so much shaming on the topic of, I mean, it's literally like an insult to call someone that word, you yeah. know, yeah. and we just never even want to talk about it. And it's, that's, we got to get past that. Uh, yes. Half the population of the world has a vagina and it's actually a pretty integral part of human health for women. So can you enlighten us a little bit about the vaginal microbiome and why you guys created one of only three products just to <laughs> support the health of it? Sure. Yeah. And, and just to like add on to what you're saying, I mean, women weren't even included in clinical trials until 1993. Um, and the gender data gap is is pretty extraordinary, and 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 I'm sure in what you're in your world and like biohacking, and I mean we know that so much of the data that we're working from, even around longevity and other, is coming actually from primarily male cohorts. Yeah, right. Um, and so I think that's partially why you're seeing this like menopause boom now, and I think we're starting to realize that like we don't know enough actually. Um, yeah. There's huge. We we work with uh, one of the extraordinary scientists at the Weizmann Institute. Hiran Segal just published a paper in the last year that really articulated it. He, he works from the Human Phenotype Project, which was the largest multiomics data set that exists in the, in the world today on human data. And, he, and, and the sex differences, the biological sex differences in aging markers and but what, what constitutes biological age is really extraordinary. Wow. Um, and so he's starting to look at like how you look at biological age by organ system mm. because and which, which of course for women, of course, is then going to have vari variability and, and be different. And so it's really, it's totally. really super exciting. And, and in terms of just going back to your actual question, um, you know, so much of what you said at the beginning is, is part of why we, we of course um, developed and, and started to focus on the vaginal microbiome. Um, but also of course, because I think that, you know, we're in a beautiful moment right now of microbiome where 
We're a couple of decades into having sequencing technologies that really allow us to see at a much higher resolution after we sequence the human genome, we ended up having um, uh, you know, a, a much greater uh, view of, of what these genes are, I mean, even of microbes, of human cells, of course, also of, yeah. of micro microbial genes. And that's part of partially what blew the field of gut microbiome open. Mm -hmm. um, and very interestingly, very unlike the gut microbiome, which is very marked, I'm sure you know this from your work, that like you really are looking at uh, health markers like diversity and abundance yes. and, and richness. And you're, and you know, in some ways, if you were comparing it to an, the environment, you'd want to see like a lush rainforest that's like thriving yeah. with all different exactly. kinds of plants, right? In the vagina, it's totally the opposite. And the vaginal microbiome is really interesting, in some ways simpler, ironically, <laughs> given yeah. everyone says vaginas are so complicated, but actually the gut is so much more complex than the vaginal microbiome. Mm -hmm. Because what they found and what we understand and, and our collaborator in the, in the field is Dr. Jacques Ravel, who's really the leading and one of the foundational scientists of the whole field, wrote the first NIH grant for vaginal microbiome research. Um, interestingly, was turned down because the NIH said that women wouldn't know how to swab themselves. So Whoa. just to show you how science sometimes gets stalled just by like yeah. really misguided beliefs. Um, but anyway, nonetheless, he persisted. And two decades later, we started to understand that the vaginal microbiome, again, very unlike the gut, is really you don't want diversity. Mm. You actually, and, and when they started to look at the vaginal microbiome, they started to realize that there were five distinct types, community state types, um, that all had very different microbial profiles. And, out, and outside of type one, most of them actually were more susceptible to poor reproductive, urogenital, and gynecological outcomes. And they were more like, let's call them like unbalanced or unstable. Mm -hmm. And so what you found with type one vaginal microbiomes was that they're dominated by Lactobacillus crispatus. And we, we knew for a long time that Lactobacillus was a very positive genus for the, for the vagina, but we didn't necessarily have specificity. And so um, Dr. Ravel's work also showed not just that a, a, a vaginal microbiome dominated by Lactobacillus crispatus is optimal and the most resilient, the most stable, the most protective, and the most defensive, and also the most correlated with good reproductive outcomes. Mm. It's, um, it, it, it was also that not all strains of Lactobacillus crispatus are equal. So mm. some strains within crisp the crispatus species are more protective than others. Mm. And so that really led to, you know, us saying, well, now, you know, what, what we do is we understand how to put consortia of microbes together to impact human health. And that's obviously what we did in, the, in, in our gut program and what we continue to do in our gut program. But in the vaginal program, we had a different challenge, which was we don't want to necessarily like enrich this like rich ecosystem. We mm. actually want to shift an ecosystem from whatever it is to a more stable, resilient, and Lactobacillus crispatus dominated microbiome. And that's what we did. And so mm -hmm. um, our first, you know, we, we just launched our first product, which, which I mentioned, which, which you mentioned, um, uh, called VSO1, which is a vaginal symbiotic. And it's three specific strains of Lactobacillus crispatus that were isolated from over 600 um, wow. over the course that were isolated during uh, from Dr. Ravel's work over, you know, as I said, over over two decades, um, one of the largest vaginal strain banks in the world. And so they're, they're native Lactobacillus strains, but three that were selected for their genomes for, the, for their for their and, and to, for as being the most protective um, and stable. Mm -hmm. And so in the in our clinical trial, we were able to demonstrate that no matter what vaginal microbiome you started with, we're able to convert within 21 days and shift a vaginal microbiome to a lactobacillus crispatus dominated vaginal microbiome. Wow, that's huge. Because yeah, I know that really, it's very exciting. It's the first, you know, yeah. really first of its kind and, and obviously incredibly just empowering just to go back to how you started and opened. It's really, really empowering yeah. to have these kinds of advancements because women outside of the, um, the shame of not talking about your, yeah. your vagina, women suffer with what's happening with their vagina, yeah. vaginal health, and they suffer silently as a result. Right. There's all this shame and silence and yes. stuff. And it's like, if you look at the rates of bacterial vaginosis and yeast infections, it's such a common thing. That's and like, for, 
persistent bacterial vaginosis many yes. women deal with and never want to talk about and they you know no one really has the answers for them it's like well i took an antibiotic and it didn't help and now i have gut issues and you know it's just this yes. like secret world that's going on but it's it it's needs to it be is. talked about more and yeah. you know just like the gut microbiome which obviously you guys know and we'll get into that in a second here mm -hmm. you know you when you have a healthy environment that's when things don't thrive right it's just kind of like us and our mindsets it's like if we're all kind of messed up and jumbled up on the internals and our we're going to welcome in kind of toxic energies and all these kind of things yes. it's the same thing with our gut microbiome or vaginal microbiome like when you have more of a healthy environment, yes. you know, those toxic things tend to not overgrow, right? Which is kind of the premise of, you know, using um, a vaginal microbiome support. And I was curious, is it a vaginal suppository? It is. Yeah. And, and so it's really interesting. There's, um, it, it, it's a tablet, it's a vaginal tablet um, that mm -hmm. is a suppository. Um, mm -hmm. It starts month one, is kind of like your reset and you, you do a lot of coaching. So you'd appreciate that mindset of yeah. like almost like a cleanse or like a kind of a, a real like restart. And so it's six tablets in the first month. Um, okay. So it's day one, four, seven, 14 and 21, 28. So it's before your cycle. Okay. And then every, and then you just do that reset once and then every month, day one and 14. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it's really, it's really, you know, you kind of have to put the work in up front, right? Yeah. You have to kind of replant the garden, so to speak. Right. Um, and then after that, it's really just about the maintenance and the sustaining of that ecology. Um, and to speak, you know, speaking about you, you, you kind of mentioned something interesting, which is like just that idea of toxic to toxicity. <laughs> The vaginal microbiome, very similar to the gut microbiome, you know, unlike our genomes, which are kind of fixed, a way of thinking about it is like fixed, our microbiomes are such an extraordinary lever of health because they're so dynamic and they're actually yeah. changeable and, and, um, but they're also very sent they're sensitive to, to impact and so when they're not resilient and stable stressors like stress mm -hmm. um, diet even like I always I always say this one and people kind of like tilt their heads because they don't think about it, but even like Brazilian waxing, cleansers, mm. sex, including right. fingers, including toys, including mouths, right. all of that impacts the vaginal microbiome, certain contraception, um, certain prescriptions, and certainly other like hygiene and, and exercise and swimming even. Right. And so we're, you know, we know that we're just gonna live our lives, right? Like we're not gonna stop living our lives. <laughs> and so the problem is that a lot of women live their lives and they're just like, oh God, like while they're having sex, they're like, well, I'm definitely getting a UTI tomorrow. Right. You know? And that's like, and so they're not living their lives, right? They're, um, they're just doing their <laughs> lives, but with this kind of baseline stress and concern. And so, yeah. you know, opportunities to, to really, I think, change that quality of life and thinking, then of course, to your point, really diminish stress, which I think is a beautiful kind of side effect. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I think, so you're, you're spacing it out at what I'm assuming is just like gradually feeding yes. those bacteria consistently. Right. Yes, exactly. So you're, so, so the tablet, it's interesting. We tested in the clinical trial, we tested our own product as a tab. We have a, a smart, it's called a smart tablet. So we, we, we developed a very slow dissolving tablet. Um, we tested that against a capsule or a, a vaginal capsule, mm -hmm. and we tested mm -hmm. that against an oral capsule because we mm -hmm. really wanted to make right. the point that oral probiotics for vaginal health don't really work. No, I, I was and very happy about to hear it wasn't that. <laughs> yeah, and if you think about it biologically, like how could it, right, right. for the most part? Like it'd be pretty hard for it to get, you know, yeah. after digestion and everything, what would it do? So. Yeah. It was what what's really very interesting um, that the smart tablet and the way that it dissolves it dissolves very slowly, and so it's delivering these three strains of Lactobacillus crispatus, but it's also delivering prebiotics um, that help that create an environment and a nutrient source for the three crispatus strains to thrive and to colonize, nice, and to take nice. up residence in the vagina. And so it's kind of like setting up. It's like kind of like you know setting up your frontline <laughs> defense. Yeah. And, the best way to think about the vaginal microbiome that really resonates with people is really just thinking about that you it's very similar a lot of people say you know majority of your immune systems in your gut and i think that's a really nice way for people to understand why gut health is so important think about your vaginal microbiome as your vaginal immune system and it has its own nice. immune system nice lactobacillus are your best possible frontline defenders right and you want them doing something called making you want them making lactic acid so that your vagina is very acidic 
so that pathogens yes. cannot take up residence. Like they can't cross the front line, so to speak. Right. And I think that's like, um, you know, I, I think it's really helpful when people start to understand that because then you're, it's so empowering. Right. Exactly. Like, you know, you're like, I, I, you know, and, and I think women end up in these like cycles of suffering and they also end right. up, I'm sure you see this in your practice in just cycles of like boric acid. And so what you're doing yeah. is like, you're, you're, you're scorching, you know, you're burning the forest, but you're not reseeding it with anything. Right. And so you're just killing everything, which understandably when you're suffering, understand, yeah. <laughs> of course, like, and by the way, in the, under the right circumstances, I'm not like a anti-antibiotics person. I'm an anti-overuse of antibiotics person. Yeah. Um, and so in, you know, it, it's, but if you're going to use antibiotics and you're going to use boric acid, you have to understand that you're indiscriminately killing everything, which as of course for certain infections. And if you have, you know, you, you can't live with the suffering of symptoms, you, of course you should do, but then you have to say, well, what am I reseeding this with? Right. What am I replanting? Right. Because you can't be surprised that the weeds grow back. If you didn't right. replant, if you didn't replant it, and so that's kind of yeah. if you, a nice way to think about it. Yeah, perfect analogy. So helpful. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, for there's other um, vaginal suppositories, and I, you know, could you explain the difference between your, the science, you know, what you guys have created, and what else you might find out there? Yeah, what else you might find out there is a probably a twenty podcasts full of content that I can, <laughs> but I can say I, we hear we hear nothing. You know, we hear we see all kinds of crazy things. Also, interestingly, you know, probiotics in the United States are regulated very differently than they are in other countries, mm -hmm. and so the term probiotic is really thrown around in the U.S. in a way that it, you you can't use it in like Europe and, and Japan and there's no real like scientific um, mm. threshold for, for using the term. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you know, what, what I see, you know, in terms of symptoms and um, and people just trying anything, I, I think you can spend about five seconds on Reddit to know that people are dipping their tampons in yogurt, they're putting garlic in their vagina, um, they're putting, you know, boric acid, of course, and then of course, there's people who are just on multiple cycles of antibiotics and trying really uh -huh. all kinds of strong antimicrobials, and then also, of course, also trying dietary intervention, etc. In the world of, um, in, and as I said, those are, many of them are antimicrobials, but the problem is, is that they're not long-term sustainable solutions, because they're not actually going to the source. Right. They're, they're not saying we're going to make the soil better. They're just saying we're going to kill everything so that like I can stop suffering. Right. right. Which, which makes, of course, a tremendous amount of sense when you are suffering. All right. In terms of probiotics, we see a lot of different things. We see a lot of vaginal probiotics that are being sold, but they use gut strains. Oh, so that's okay. very interesting for us because they're using lactobacillus but they're not strains that are residents of the are native residents of the vagina, which oh, wow. back to what I was saying earlier is precisely what you don't want. So that's right. very, and that's kind of interesting for us. Um, uh -huh. and, and when we, when we see those things, I think, you know, there's a lot of other, uh, I think there's, you know, there's a lot of products that are, as I said, being sold orally. Um, and there's very mm -hmm. little, mm -hmm. and, and in some cases, poor data, uh, yeah. around how you can modulate the vaginal microbiome, um, through taking like an oral capsule. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and as I said, we tested ours against, we tested ourselves against ourselves, and we yeah. tested against the le leading oral probiotic and we, we the, the differences are very clear that that'll be published in August in IDZOG, which is like one of the more prominent uh, obstetric journals. Um, and so, you know, we, we, we see, and we also see a lot of claims and a lot of disease claims and we see a lot of people selling women that this is going to cure your bv and this is going to cure your uh -huh. eyes, i've seen some way, slimy so, stuff out yeah. there like which, by the way it's illegal <laughs> it's totally illegal those are those are drug claims and those are illegal um and and people always say well how do i know how can i tell the difference and i what i usually say is look if a company is claiming to cure a disease or claim that they prevent a disease or condition right. it's just not if it's, and it's not a drug you're not able to do that so that means that that's a company that's probably already taking a certain level of risk in their claims and their marketing. And so I, you know, again, I can't make assumptions because I don't know all, all these companies, I don't know all these companies, uh -huh. but I, I do know the regulatory and I know the legal side of it. And I know yeah. that if they're a company that's willing to do that and take that risk, then I wonder what else is, <laughs> what uh -huh. other risks were taken because um, there is, there's, there, you just can't, in the United States from the FDA, like you actually just can't do 
you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not really ethical. That being said, that doesn't mean that, and, and again, and this is just where you have to be open-minded, like, you know, a lot of women are very hesitant um, to take any medications. And, you know, of course, the nice thing about ours is it's a natural product. It's yeah. just it's literally just putting back uh, microbes that are native to the vagina um, that in for many, many women due to very, very variability and disruptions just aren't present for whatever reason, or they're not present in the right amounts, or they're not stable. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. so I, I do understand people really wanting to find natural solutions. Mm-hmm. Um, the nice thing about ours is that it's natural, but it's also <laughs> very well validated by science. Um, so I do understand where a lot of the like Reddit <laughs> and, the, yeah. and, and also women are desperate. And so they're constantly right. searching. And I think there's just companies that are very opportunistic about that, you know? Yeah. And you can kind of tell when you see some of these websites, yeah. I've seen them. I mean, you can yeah. just, if you just listen to your gut ladies, like you just know that yes. this is a slimy website. It's obvious. And then you go to seeds website and it's like, here's all the research. It's very clean. Mm-hmm. It's not yes. like this, like over the top salesy, like yeah. blog post that keeps yes. linking back to the same place. I and mean, you, know, you can just kind of tell, Yeah. Um, but you know, obviously like you guys have the science behind it. It's, it's obvious that you are committed to it actually working and not commit just committed to it selling. Yes. Right. And so like, you know, we're intuitive sure. and you can just tell, <laughs> come on. Um, thank you. I will. Thank you for, thank you for saying that it's not for <laughs> That means a lot and i know my team will hear this and that will mean a lot to them because we certainly do not we, <laughs> yeah we, we play the long game you know we play the long right. game it's people's health you know it's our, yeah. it's our sisters and friends and moms and you and right. me. it's like it's humans it's human health it's a big deal it's like i think people don't realize it's like people are putting things in their bodies like that we we, we take that's a big accountability that we, yeah. we take really seriously yeah, you can tell. I mean, when I looked at, originally looked at your your website, I was like, oh, okay, cool. These guys get it. They're doing whole genome, genome sequencing. They have clinical research study. Yes. Like they're they're doing it well. So it's seen and appreciated. And I think Thank you really you. summed it up very well on the vaginal microbiome of like, because most women have heard of boric acid, like, oh, you get like bacterial vaginosis or anything, you, you just to take boric acid or whatever. But you summed it up well as like, if you have these lactic acid producers creating an acidic environment all the time, then you're not going to be likely to have these pathogens overgrow. And it's like, exactly. there it is, you know? And, so. and, and also, I, I don't know how many people in your community or your listeners or your, your clients are on their reproductive journeys, but you know, the acidity of the vagina and the health of the vaginal microbiome has everything to do and is highly correlated with reproductive success whether getting pregnant and then having mm. successful births and then also the um, uh, pre- lowest incidences, for example, in lactobacillus crispatus dominant uh, vaginal microbiomes of um, lowest incidences of preterm birth mm. as well. Wow. And infertility. Wow. Yeah, and even, even particularly people who are on IVF, like they're starting to now understand that like the vaginal microbiome plays a role wow. in their, like the success of even like, um, and it's correlated with even the success of, um, you know, other, 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 other opportunities for reproduction like IVF. So wow. it's very, it's very, very interesting. And you yeah. know, the, post, the postpartum vaginal microbiome is another really interesting opportunity huh. um, because the postpartum vaginal microbiome shifts and changes as well. Um, and, right. uh, and, you know, and you look, you have, you have a, a 85% of women in the United States who are pregnant end up on an antibiotic at some point during pregnancy. And what we're not, what a lot of people don't talk about is that it's, they might be taking it for like a vaginal issue, or they might be taking it for strep B, for example, or they might be taking it for a number of reasons. I was going to say that, you know, so many, 85% of pregnant women in the United States, um, are taking an antibiotic at some point during pregnancy. And so it's very interesting because a lot of women are taking these antibiotics for vaginal issues um, and and even in general, Mm non-pregnant women. Mm -hmm. But we don't also realize that that then has another impact, which is the gut microbiome. And so, you know, so it's, you know, and so there's um, there's the, the suffering and then the treatments you know, it's one thing to do boric acid locally. It's another to be like taking four rounds of Cipro in a, in a given year or metronidazole or, you know, because that has other implications for our health. And then I think that just, you know, it just kind of creates that cascade and that's that, that kind of domino effect of cycling. And you probably see with a lot of clients and you probably hear about from your community, which, um, you know, is really, it, it then creates other other problems. Yeah. Uh, that you yeah then have. So you kind of just feel like you're in this like whack-a-mole 
right. uh, of your health. And, um, and it's very, it's very painful for people. And in addition to all the things you said earlier, which is, and it's embarrassing and shaming and, right. you know, and, and you said earlier women's health, but actually, you know, vaginal health is like a societal, that's a human health issue. You yeah, know? definitely. Women go down. It's not good for anybody. Right. <laughs> it, it, Families, it, communities, you know, right. our, our, our friend ecosystems are like, you know, our workplaces. I mean, it's just, it has, you know, it has, it has a huge domino effect, our children. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. That's such a, such an interesting point you made about, um, you know, fertility and the likelihood of, you know, miscarriage or preterm birth yeah. or whatever, because, you know, it just it definitely makes my mind go to, you know, we always talk about how when the baby comes through the birth canal, they pick up the mm -hmm. vaginal microbiome. And I'm like, oh my gosh, is it like the body's like, well, if that's not healthy, we don't want the baby to have to go, you know, like it definitely makes my curiosity wheel start yes. spinning. So that's such an interesting share. Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay. Um, let's shift over to gut microbiome if that's okay. okay. For sure. Um, yeah. You know, the first time I ever heard of you guys, I was actually just talking to a woman and she was telling me that she had like a ton of gut symptoms. And she's like, have you heard of seed? And I was like, no, I haven't. She's like, well, I took that. And like, it just resolved all my gut issues. And I'm like, yep. you took a one probiotic and it resolved <laughs> all your gut issues. Whoa. You know, so it kind of turned me on to you guys. I'm like, what are these guys? Oh, up to? Awesome. And I've been very interested in, I mean, the, the, your approach is, I like it, you know, so could you tell us about, um, sure. what is this? What is the name of the gut microbiome product? Our, our primary adult product, uh, uh -huh. symbiotic, it's called DSO1, daily symbiotic. Yeah, it's oh, DSO1. One. Yeah, and it was it was our flagship product. And, you know, I, I'm i I'm very proud to say, and like I, whenever I hear those stories, it it, um, it always gets me because, you know, it we really do, we hear this like every day from like people from all over the world. It's, it's, it's extraordinary and obviously such okay. a, um, a beautiful outcome of, um, of, of doing good science, um, yeah. and, and, you know, and doing good work and, and, and also, but, you know, the other side of it is what you learn, what you learn when you put products like this out in the world, is just how many people do suffer from these issues. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, which is extraordinary. I mean, I think the stat, the last stat I read was like 15% of the United States has diagnosed IBS. Wow. Yeah. You know, gut issues are out of control yeah. right now, yeah. out of control. And so, so, yeah. so I can tell you about DSO-1. Yeah. We tell started, us all about it. You know, the field, the field of microbiome really started in the gut and that's where, that's also where we started. It's where the kind of most robust research is. Um, and we started really with this idea of when we first started, we, you know, we, we knew that we would, we're going to be looking at all kinds of um, aspects of microbiome and, and health, including vaginal microbiome. And, you know, there's an oral microbiome, there's other microbiomes, maybe other episodes <laughs> at another yeah. time, but you know, the, 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 the gut yeah. microbiome, I think for us, what we really saw was there was it's this extraordinary lever of health, right? You know this from your work. Yes. Um, it's v really like, there has not been a lever of health presented to us as humans really like this ever, because yeah. we, we understand how connected it is to everything. And yet, it's, as I said earlier, it's not like our genome. Like we might know that genes do things, but we actually can't do a lot about that today mm -hmm. in the future, but not today. Yeah. And yeah. so what we really set out to say was for our first product. And, you know, we also wanted to clear the noise a little bit in the world of probiotics. I think we were seeing gut mania. We are seeing a lot of like products cr claiming kind of to your point earlier, just crazy things. And mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of science. Um, there wasn't a lot of rigor and there wasn't a lot of specificity. Um, and there wasn't a, a brand that was also really coming from a very educational approach. And so what we said was, how could we create very similar, almost like to a multivitamin, right? Like how could you create this, like one probiotic that would look not just locally within the gut at like digestive and GI uh, biomarkers um, and benefits, um, but how could you look actually uh, even beyond the gut and look at some of the mechanistic pathways like the gut skin axis, the gut liver access, and I'll get into some of those gut immune function and start to say, like, if you could take one consortia of microbes every day, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. And very different than a lot of other probiotics that I think start, start from the strains, we kind of um, start looking at like genomic diversity. And so we wanted to put together a very diverse consortia, which is what you call a, like a, or a, a community of strains or a formulation of multiple strains. That really, um, that really covered kind of a very holistic 
um, you know, set of benefits that you could say, even if I'm a generally healthy person, um, I actually would benefit from taking this on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And so that was really like first. And then we said, you know, those are the probiotics. And then we said, there's a, there's an opportunity and, and to really start that was this is when early we were really I think some of the pre prebiotic research has also come a long way in recent years but you know we knew that prebiotics were going to become like a very also important lever as well of mm -hmm. course prebiotics are interesting because you can get certain prebiotics and certain plant fibers from diet um, mm -hmm. so this wasn't meant to like replace diet by any stretch but we wanted to look at very specific prebiotics that were non-fermenting Mm -hmm. um, because, and you may deal with a lot of clients that are on FODMAP diets, et cetera, but prebiotics can be quite uh, gaseous and, and also just to, to the fermentative activity can be very uncomfortable for certain mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. We also wanted to find a very novel prebiotic. And, and part of that was for two reasons. One was um, we wanted to be, be able to deliver the probiotics and, and a prebiotic and prebiotics can do many different things. Some, sometimes you just think of that though, very, very simply like just food for bacteria, for good microbes to grow. Right. But our pro prebiotic works a little bit differently, which is that it's a compound uh, called punicalgin that comes from Indian pomegranate skin. Um, and it's actually biotransformed by microbes to create a compound that you may be very familiar with, which is called urolithin A. Mm. Mm. And urolithin A is getting written up as like the youth molecule, but right. it's becoming known as a very, very important compound in a lot of um, processes in the human body that improve biological function. And so, um, and so one of the things, you know, once we identified the microbes and which probiotics, we said, okay, we want to look at local benefits. We wanted, that's why I said earlier, benefits in and beyond the gut. We started with GI benefits and digestive. What's very important. People want to poop really, really well. They want to, that feels really, it feels good to make sure that your system is, it's very, very important aspect of health is that you're moving totally. waste through your system. Yes. So pooping, motility, ease of expulsion, um, healthy stool regularity. Those were just like the core, let's say like the digestive benefits, bloating um, reduction or ease of bloating. Then you start to look and say, okay, what other mechanistically? Then we wanted to make sure that we are, you know, formulation wise, we were looking at strains that also mechanistically worked on gut immune function. So for example, strains that signal like tight junctions to tighten and, and so that your gut barrier would be very, very, very integrous, right? We've all heard of like leaky gut or gut permeability. Mm -hmm. Just living yeah. in the built world, not in yeah. nature. Like we we just eating in a restaurant. Yeah. The it's rinse aid that they issue. use, the rin the rinse aid they use in the dish, like just right. all of these things induce gut toxicity. You want to eat peanut right. butter that's processed, like there's emulsify right. all these emulsifiers, they just rip apart our gut barriers. Right. So even if you're a healthy person, you're just living in the world, yeah. exposed to things that so the gut barrier piece was really important. That's part of your gut immune function. Mm-hmm. Then we said, okay, now let's look beyond the gut. So there are strains that mechanistically, for example, worked on a gut on the gut skin axis. And then we say, okay, they dampen the inflammatory pathway that can lead to lots of disruptions on the skin. Um, and then another really, two more really interesting ones. One, well, one more, I'll go into one more. Another uh, strain that also works on the gut liver axis. And that has to do with the prevention of reuptake of cholesterol. So that's a cardiovascular benefit. So it really was, DSO-1 was really conceptualized to kind of look at like systemic health and say, what consortia of microbes and prebiotics could you take on a daily basis, probiotic and prebiotic, um, that for even a relatively healthy person, before you get into somebody like the person that you mentioned who had gut issues, would actually be beneficial. Mm -hmm. and so that's really where it came from. But of course, it then it is now the number one probiotic in the United States, which is very, very exciting. Wow. Um, wow. And that I think it speaks to the fact that very generally healthy people benefit, but also people come to us, at least anecdotally, articulating all kinds of, of course, really, really interesting outcomes um, for health. And we just published, we just published, actually, it's fun, fun to be talking to you today, because last week we were at DDW, which is Digestive Disease Week, one of the more um, mm -hmm. kind of the preeminent like gastrointest gastroenterological uh, conferences in the world and our C our chief medical officer presented two papers but one's probably really relevant for your audience on DSO1 which is we're the first probiotic to demonstrate the recovery of the gut microbiome taking DSO1 alongside a broad spectrum antibiotic and after wow and that was within 14 days so we preserved gut diversity wow. we enriched beneficial bacteria and the gut barrier stayed entirely intact during um the the broad spectrum antibiotics so that's really exciting because 
as you know, there's yeah. 211 million prescriptions of antibiotics in the United States yeah. every year, which is crazy, you know. Wow. Will that be released on your website soon? Or uh, is it that will be, it'll be, it, uh, it'll be the, well, it was presented last week and it will be, I think it may even be, I, I will, I will find out for you, but I think okay. it be being, it's being published in the next month. So in the next month. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, wow. Awesome. I, I love hearing that you're using um, non-fermentable prebiotics, right? Cause that's, can be a barrier. Yes. Right. is like, well, now you're all bloated and gassy. And exactly. So, right. Exactly. That's, that's yes, exactly. huge. And yeah. And it's actually the prebiotic. If you open our, our capsule is the probiotic capsule is inside our prebiotic capsule. Mm -hmm. And so the prebiotic, actually that compound, that punicalgin actually does a couple of things, but it actually buffers our pre, our probiotic mm -hmm. capsule all the way through the GI tract so that it has that release at the end of a small intestine and then yeah. into the colon. Um, yeah, it's really cool. So you're getting the fermentation of that prebiotic on the way down as it's nice. moving, and then you're getting the microbes going into the colon. And we have really interesting data for that to show that. Yeah, yeah. Let's dive into that because that was another thing that I was impressed with you guys with of being able to get the yes. the bacteria to survive the stomach acid and get yes. all the way into the colon where you want it. Can you share yeah. a little bit more about that? For sure, for sure. So, so because the probiotics are housed within this prebiotic. So, mm -hmm. so let's start by, by just from an educational perspective, saying that bacteria are super sensitive to heat, mm -hmm. light, moisture, um, and really any variability in, in environment. And so you ha it's very hard to get them alive. Um, and actually a lot of companies often use what's called, you see those huge billions numbers and then, mm -hmm. or trillions, and then it says CFU, that's yeah. colony forming units. We actually measure in AFU because what's misleading about CFU is that you can kind of count them, but that doesn't mean that all those cells are viable. So AFU, which is active fluorescing units, huh. actually shows you not just how many there are, but how many of those cells are actually viable. Wow. And, that, and that's very, and it's very important because a lot of micro, uh, yeah. microbes are also sensitive, right? They can get damaged. They, they may not be viable cells. So. So um, the probiotic capsule is inside the prebiotic. And then the prebiotic is interesting because it acts, it controls water, it helps to control the water activity. It shields the microbes. It's a very dark brown substance. So it actually shields the microbes from any light. In addition mm -hmm. to the capsule is a bit darker. It's a dark, like a dark green. And it really helps, it, it kind of protects it so that it's really opening in a very um, optimized way as it moves through the GI tract. So the prebiotic is really exposed to the GI tract and the microbes up further up in the GI tract um, where there's a little bit of fermentative activity happening. And then it allows, and then you get the full inner capsule then opening kind of into the colon, which is really where you want to kind of deliver the majority. It's where, that's where your microbiome is, is majority right. of your microbiome is. Right. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. yeah. I, I think all of us, you know, you see these like it has 70 billion and you're kind of, you, you almost like when you take it, you're kind of like, uh-huh. You yes, know I, mean? you're I like, know. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's hard. It's also, it's also hard because like microbes, you can't even see microbes with the human eye, you know, right. so it's, like, it's a number that like doesn't necessarily it's hard to make make meaning out of it as a as a consumer, um, but we do test in the Shine system, which is like an it's called an ex vivo system. So it's actually a simulation of the human gut. It's about the size of a small room. And it, yeah, what does that what does Shine stand for? Sorry, real quick. It's the si uh, simulation of the human intestinal microbiome environment. I believe something. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Can you describe yeah. that a little bit? Sorry. Yeah. So it's, it's this multi chambered multi chambered machine. Uh, mm -hmm. that models human di digestion and you can feed it food, you can feed it prebiotics, you can look at compounds and you can really get a snapshot of each stage of digestion. You can mimic the microbiome, you can mim mimic other um, aspects of the, the digestive system and you can take a snapshot at every stage of digestion. Um, uh, and it was actually developed, I believe, at the University of Ghent um, mm -hmm. in Belgium and, and, uh, it's, a, it's become kind of a, a more widely, no, no one was really, really using it when we started, but a lot of companies have started to, to mm -hmm. use it to validate all kinds of ways of studying the, the mm -hmm. GI tract microbiome.
Mm, so you're able to see, okay, where is this yes. actually getting released? Yeah, there's, a How cool, this like, actually di- there's a cool diagram of it on an image of it on our website. Somewhere. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Super helpful. Yeah, yeah you, your website is very helpful. I mean, you guys have all of this data. It's very easy. It's, whoever designed the website, kudos, because it's very, <laughs> very easy to follow, to understand. It's professional. So yeah, check, definitely check Thank out you. the website because all of the science is on there as well. And I love the simplicity of all of it. So um, really quite easy to navigate your way around and understand what you're taking. Mm -hmm. Um, Lots of links for other studies just on the different strains themselves. So you can- Yeah, a lot of the strains, some of the strains like our l crispatus strains for vaginal symbiotic, for example, are our own. Those are proprietary. Uh There's other strains um, that we have used, like for example, in DSO-1 that have been very well characterized in many, many, many clinical trials. Uh outcomes so we we you know depending on what 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 we're developing um sometimes they're just our own strains sometimes we're working with other collaborators and using their nice strains. well i am blown away i am definitely wow. excited to uh order some of this myself and take some <laughs> get to you know try, try, experiment with some clients on it um and uh, your 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 team sent me a discount code for the audience. I just want to mention oh. that real quick. Thank you. Um, it's 25 inside out. So that's 25% off the VSO1 starter kit. Um, it says, or can also be off their first month of seat. So pretty awesome. Thank you so much for that. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, so we'll link that up in the show notes and yeah, anything else that we didn't hit on? Just if I would say that we, you know, if, if anyone in your community has any questions, we have a whole team, um, called SciCare and they're all, um, experts who can answer science product, health related questions and Amazing. you can reach them at SciCare at seed.com. And, um, we are, we put out all kinds of awesome education on Instagram at, at seed and you can find us at seed.com. Thank you so much. Kudos. Oh, Amazing. Thank, thank you. you for sharing so beautifully with the world and with us today. Thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you for your questions.